He is a pastor of Crossover Church in Florida. He's the author of several books. He's a CHH artist with more than nine albums to his pen. He's a major event promoter and mover in our culture. He go by the, oh, by the way, let me tell you, he's also an actor. I didn't realize that before. So let me introduce my brother and friend, Pastor Tommy D. Kailonen. Welcome to the show, brother. What's going on, Trey? Good to see you, bro. It's good to see you, man. It's good to see you. So I'm not playing when I tell you that cracking this book during my vacation was a treat, man, for so many reasons. Um, one, cool. for me, it even, well, well, before I jump all into that, man, let me let, let, let Give, give folks a, ch- a chance to get to know who you are, just in case they don't know you, man. I introduced you as a pastor, an author, a CHH artist, man, an event promoter, the holder of Flavor Fest for years upon years, church planter, right? Because now you've got crossover in Atlanta. And so what's one thing that, when I read all those things off, man, a lot of people can look you up on Google, but what's one thing they might not be able to find about you? That only some of the people really closest to you know, man. What's an interesting fact? Man, you 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 like laid it all out. <laughs> you <laughs> said the actor piece. You were like, "Oh, yeah, that that's something that I've done a little bit of. That's been a little bit low key, except for the yeah. people that have ended up, you know, coming across it." Um, man. So, le- like I say, a new hobby that I got into in the last year or so, last two years is kayaking. Is that I, right? I really like kayaking, man. Uh, I went huh. here in, in Florida. We have some natural springs. And I went to this natural spring and went kayaking. And it's just so relaxing, man. To yeah. get out in nature and the water is clear to the bottom. You can see the fish and there's like manatees swimming next to you and mm. stuff. And mm. I mean, it's just, and then you can get out and go swimming in it. It's a little yeah. cold because it's spring water. But um, man, just so that's been something that I've been trying to do. This is really nice spring. It's like a, a little less than an hour away. So I try to get away and go up there. Nice. Lisa, every now and then take my, my daughters, take somebody I'm mentoring and take, right. them, you know, uh, my mentor actually was the first one that took me kayaking and even took me paddle boarding last year, man. I never paddle boarded before that. That was kind of cool as well. Man, that's dope. So that's always dope. trying new things, man. You got to keep trying new things, man. That's right. That's right, man. It's so funny because I was watching, uh, we were watching a thing last weekend on extreme kayaking. Just so okay. happened to be watching the show on Netflix, man. And cats were going over cliffs oh, that were nah. about 20, 50 feet. And we were, man, you got to be kidding. You know yeah, what I mean? So, uh, going over like yeah. a waterfall. <laughs> yes, man. Going over these huge waterfalls. So, uh, I have to but, yeah. That up, bro. Yeah. So, as I mentioned, man, you do so many things and have done so for years upon years, continuing to kind of elevate in what you do. A lot of times when we see folks, um, unfortunately, we see the highlight reels, right? We don't get to see the valleys and we don't get a full picture of the story. Yeah. What would you say? has gotten you to this point, man, where you're thriving in the way that you're thriving? Man, I would say really it's just consistency, uh, faithfulness, and always wanting to innovate Mm. because you can't Mm. stay in the same spot. And I mean, mean, we could see what happened the last couple of years with the pandemic. You know, Mm. you got a lot of people that, you know, just kept trying to do it the same way. <laughs> and man, we had to make yeah. some changes like really yeah. fast. And so because our church regularly is always innovating and doing things different, mm-hmm. like we were able to move quickly and we thrived during the pandemic, even though we were yeah. closed, yeah. you know, for like six months. Um, we just did a lot of very creative stuff online, doing a lot of outreaches in the community. Mm-hmm. During that time, did a grocery drive through a back to school drive through Um, we just utilized every tool, every relationship and leveraged those things, uh, to make an impact. And as a result, like our church actually grew when we reopened, just had so many new people coming. And today, like we're larger than we were before the pandemic Mm, with our in-person attendance and just so many other metrics, but that's because we, you know, shifted and moved. Yes. And uh, even with Flavor Fest, man, like Flavor Fest wouldn't still be around mm-hmm. if we weren't always trying new things, if we weren't switching it up, if we would have just been doing the same exact formula. Because yes. we watched a lot of other events in our in our movement that went for maybe about 10 years and they kind of just stayed the same. Right. And then right. eventually they kind of fizzled out. But we're constantly trying to, you know, stay relevant, do things different, add some stuff, mm-hmm. take some stuff away switch it up, tweak it, 
you know, kind of keep our ear to the pulse of, of, of the culture and what's working and what's not working. Right, right. What you did yesterday might not work tomorrow anymore. And sometimes people are still trying to run the same play and, and the time has passed for that. Yes. And, and that's okay. God's got new things every day. So, but sometimes we're creatures of habit and we don't like to change, but we got to, we got to push ourselves. So yeah. yeah, that's why we're still moving forward. That's dope, man. That's good. And I mean, last year was such a good uh, outward expression of that in terms of taking Flavor Fest on the road to the different cities, man. Yeah, New York. first time was... to ever do that, bro. Yeah. 22 years into it. Yeah. And uh, and we're doing it again next year, by the way. Ah, that's good. That's good. There's a prelude right there. Yeah, there you go, y'all. Got, there you go. We are, we're, we're mapping it out. No, yeah. no details we can tell you yet because we're locking everything in. But Love it. Uh, Love it, Probably brother. sometime in January we, we should be announcing the that's official good. dates and cities. That's good. That's good. Well, let's, man, let's, let's go into this book. So I have to say from the onset, I'm not a sneakerhead per se. Right. Um, yeah. but I, I just want to say that to let people know, you don't have to be a sneakerhead to enjoy this book. Gotta be the shoes. Um, it is, first of all, it's laden with bars, bro. I mean, there, there are so many bars in this book in terms of Thank one you, or one line or two liners that just give you that. Mm, I need to underline that and make some notes next to it of, of why it's impacted me that way. Right. Mm. And then there's just great thematical gems, man. I think the um, the sequencing of first first of all, if you're going to buy the book, folks, I'm going to just tell you this right, right. And I have no economic interest in this. I'm just trying to help your experience. Okay, <laughs> one, get the full package that comes with the shoe box. There's something about that packaging and everything that just leads you in, and you want to engage. Yes, man, you want to engage with the whole thing. So when the shoe box came. Uh, and thank you, brother, for signing my book and everything. I'm, I'm going to tell you, just just spend a couple extra dollars, get the full experience, right? Because um, then it makes you want to jump in the book and just go through. And the, the book is laid out so well. Um, and I know you've done this with all your products. First of all, let me just say that and give you your flowers, man. You're thoughtful about your products and the way you, people can experience your products. But to, to go through and almost be taught, right, what sneaker culture is like in terms of um, uh, styles and things that drop when and how they're approached and the the um, colorways and all those different things, right? Again, you don't have to be a sneakerhead, but but two, um, those themes and how you walk through the book sequentially using the metaphor from sneaker culture to spiritual walk, brother, was just eloquently done. So I yeah, got some questions I want to dive into, man. We're not going to get through all of them, just given the time, sure. but I'm just I'm just going to write down uh, throw you some questions. And before I even do that, let me ask you this: as you were thinking about this book, starting to pen it conceptualize it, so on and so forth. What were you focused on in terms of the outcomes you wanted to see? Yeah, man. Well, first of all, like, I, I've been in the sneakers since I, you know, as you read the book, I've been in the sneakers. I wouldn't say I'm like a diehard sneakerhead. I don't have like a hundred pairs or something. Um, but I've always been in the sneakers and fashion. Mm. And I think most of us that are in the, in the hip hop at least have some, some fashion sense. So mm -hmm. we, we can appreciate it. Because really the that, that's what sneaker culture is. It's 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 a big form of fashion and art that's on your feet, you know. Right. But um, so for me, man, I know that it it ties in with with hip hop culture. Yeah. And I'm like, man, it's just another way to connect with people and reach people. And if I could talk about this topic and draw people in, then I could still tie in spiritual yes. concepts and point them to Christ. How could I do that? You know, and I came up with the idea, like already the packaging came to my head, like I'm going to put it in mm. a shoe box and put custom paper inside where you open yeah. it like you're opening shoes. And, and I want to do a full color book with pictures of kicks and we're going to do a photo shoot for it. So I'm thinking of all these like creative mm. ideas mm. and I had mm. some mm. concepts, but I'm like, how can I really tie this in? Yes. How can I really point people to Christ? So it was, it was about a year ago where I really sat down and started to pray about it and dive in and study what does the Bible have to really say about feet mm. and shoes mm. and steps and pathways? And, and as I began to really dive into that, um, man, I began to like line up like the blueprint for the book, you know, gotcha. this, like you said, sequ sequentially it's laid out nicely. And the Lord really kind of gave me that, uh, that order um, mm. to, to kind of put it together. And so, yeah, man, I've actually been at a couple of sneaker shows mm -hmm. uh, in the past month or so, having a booth, uh, reaching that culture. And it's been nice. super dope. I was at one this past Saturday, got to pray with several people, gave mm. cards out for the church. Man, that's you dope. Know, got to just talk to so many people. 
and, and yeah, sold some stuff. People are like, yeah. you know, it stands out because ain't nobody else at the sneaker show have a book. Yes. Have a book in a box, you know, yeah. and we have some yeah. customs that go with it as well. Some custom Jordan ones that we made. So like people are just like, whoa, what is this? Yeah. You know, so it just great. Gives some great opportunities to, to connect and point them to Christ. Man, that's good. That's good. Well, I mean, I'm going to just start, man, and going kind of sequentially as I Let's read go. and took notes. One of the things you, you said was, you know, basically posed the question, how much is enough? You know, really, you know, that delicate balance between wants and needs. And I'm going to quote yeah. you. You said, the fuller my closet got, the emptier my heart was. Man, yeah. elaborate on that, bro. Yeah, man. So I share in chapter one how, you know, I grew up in Philly, grew up lower income. so when I discovered fashion and shoes and I was able to save up money and, you know, buy some stuff, I I felt that became like an identity for me. Mm. And as I got a little older, I started working in retail and I started to steal. And Mm. so I I was stealing like stuff all the time. Mm. And, and, you know, my, the chapter one's called, I need those. And that was like, every time something new would come in at the store, like, Oh, I need those. Right. Right. I need every color of that hoodie. Uh, you know, I need the, you know, I need those, those, those jeans in, in both colors. And mm-hmm. so anyways, man, yeah. Like the fuller my closet got, the emptier my heart was. It didn't, it, it didn't fulfill, it didn't fulfill the thing I, I thought I was looking for. Yeah. You know, I was wearing clothes, dressing up to impress people that I didn't know that didn't even care. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day. And so that's when I really, it was kind of like a wake up call after I stole a $400 jacket. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my friend, I had it for about a month. We were at the mall. I was wearing it. And he loved the jacket. He borrowed it a few times. He's like, yo, man, we're at, we're at the sneaker store. And we're looking at these filas, these fila boots. That's when filas were big back in the 90s. And he was like, yo, he's like, I'll buy you these filas right now. If you give me your jacket and trade. And I was like, I bet. Mm. And the shoes were $60. Mm. The jacket was 400 so it was not a good trade. It's not a good trade, yeah. But it was just like, I just wanted the next new thing. I'd already yes. wore the jacket four or five times. Yeah. And it was cool, but okay, now let me get this next thing. Mm. And that's when I realized, like, yo, I got a problem. Like, this is, what, what's, what's, what's going on? What's missing? And yeah. so material stuff is never going to do it for you. That's good, bro. And, I, you know, I've heard that quote said a couple times, right? There's a God-sized hole in all of us. Yeah. That- no one can fill but God, but we try to fill it with other things. And until we let God in for real. And I think, you know, you, you say this in the first chapter and then you bring it back later to me with um, almost like a re- re- resolution piece. You say God made us all with a purpose and a calling. And I think that's so important to, to spend a, a few minutes on because I feel like we're in a, I don't know, a season more than ever, man, where. One, I'm happy that we recognize mental health and all the challenges associated with it. I'm glad that we're yeah. trying to remove that stigma of people getting help for it, right? Yeah. But at the counseling. same time, at the same time, the numbers keep moving in the wrong direction, right. right? And if you look at our youth and uh, let's just call it hopelessness as a metric, right? It's, it's, it's horrible, man. So I think, you know, this is something that I think can help people if they can grab, grapple onto it. I talk about purpose a lot, but I, I welcome you, man, uh, with that, particularly because you also come back to it in the soul restoration chapter where you say, once you are all in your creator will customize your spiritual shoes and Mm. bless your souls with unique branding, man. So just, just talk about purpose in that calling for a second, man. Yeah, man. I, I share this in the book as well, that I was hesitant to go all in with the Lord because there was a part of me for a while that, you know, I grew up in church. I did, but it was a part of me that felt like, man, if I give my life to the Lord, I'm going to lose a part of myself. Mm. Now, I knew I was going to lose the sinful part, and I was ready to let that go because I had already experienced some right. of the, the, the devastating effects of, of sin and consequences, right? Mm-hmm. But then I felt like, but man, I'm, I, I'm going to lose my, my style, my mm. flavor, my fashion, my, my music, my all, all the things that I felt like was a part of me. Um, I got to the point that I was ready to let it go. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, then God kind of gave me the green light. I'm not going to give it away. If you're going to get the book, you could read what happened. But at the end of the day, like I want to encourage people and challenge people because a lot of people that listen to hip hop or from urban culture can be hesitant to go all in with the Lord because they think then they're, they're going to have to give up like a lot of their, 
personality of who they are. Right. Like God's definitely going to transform you and change you in many, many ways. Yes. But there's a lot of neutral things. And the shoes you wear, the style, the fashion, your, your flavor, a lot of those things are, are neutral things. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that God wired you. And so I just want to like encourage people. Maybe you've never seen that because for me, I'd never seen somebody that was my age that was passionate about God that looked like me, like right. dressed and style wise, you know, I thought I was going to have to start wearing like, you know, suits and button downs and hard bottom shoes and listen to old school right. choir music, <laughs> or something, right. gospel choir music, and you know, but I just never seen. And now obviously we've created these lanes. You, you've done an incredible job, bro, with moving from an artist to now like running this, this radio network, man, that is encouraging so many people like, Oh, yo, there's Christian hip hop that's out there mm -hmm. and I can still listen to that sound and that flavor, but it can be edifying. And, and I yes. can play it in front of my kids. Right. And, exactly. And my, and my, and my, and my grandma <laughs> exactly. and everything. Right. Yep. And so, yeah. So just encourage people out there listening, like God has a customized plan for you. And there's some unique things that, that, that he put inside of you and he created you with preferences and passions and, you know, creatively is some of you listening to this are creatives. And man, you can use that for God's glory and you can still mm. be you and you're going to be a better version of you. That's strong. That's strong, bro. You know, you, you, you talk about to culture a bit. And um, one of the things I think you said is we're, we're almost like professional presenters yeah. <laughs> when it comes to social. You said we'd rather look good than feel good. The outside can look amazing, but the insole of our heart is flat and worn out. And you and you're going to talk about anxiety, depression, addiction and things such as that. Um, I'm curious, is some of that um, inspired to discuss, given your role as a pastor and some of the ongoing conversations you have with, with yeah. folks uh, in coaching and mentoring? Talk about that a little bit in the realities of that, brother. Yeah, absolutely, man. As a pastor, the last couple of years, uh, the amount of people coming to us that are struggling with anxiety and depression has just, man, it's skyrocketed. And then on top of that, those of us that are parents and so many parents coming to me mm. like they mm. might not be struggling with it, but their their teenagers are, yeah. their kids are. And, uh, you know, me and my wife have two, you know, two teenagers and uh, and they never struggle with that stuff pre pandemic. But there's just something about that season of being disconnected socially, being in front of your screen so much. I just I, I just don't think God wired us to like we're meant to be in community and right. around people and this whole thing even came up like people saying like oh i got social anxiety like i didn't even know that was a thing like right you know right. and my, my kids even had that like for a while because mm. once everything started to get back in public they're like i don't want to go to church there's too many people mm. i don't want to go to the mall mm. i don't want to sit down in a restaurant it's there's too many people it just gives me anxiety like, what are you talking about and for me, I'm an extrovert. Yeah, yeah. I love to be around people. So during the pandemic, right. I was feeling I'm like, you got to get back to the community, man. You're craving to get back, yeah. But um, so, yeah, man, I, I, you know, I can't put my finger on exactly what happened, but I think there was some stuff that happened in people's <laughs> wiring of their, yeah. of their minds. And, um, and, and so I did a lot of study on that. We've done some series on it at the church. Uh, mm. Pastor Craig Rochelle has a great book called Winning the War on Your Mind, and, and really how it talks about how God's created our brain in such a special way, man, we can actually, we can rewire it, mm -hmm. you know, if, if we focus on it. Yes. Because if you keep thinking the same thoughts for a season, um, it, it creates a pathway neurologically in your brain. Yes. And so next time a situation comes up, automatically that pathway is there. It's, it's the least path of resistance for you to think that thought again. That's so we right. all know people that are like just negative all the time or they're drama filled or they're always, you know, well, they got these pathways in their mind that they automatically, that's, that's how they've kind of wired their brain. But you can, like it's scientifically proven, you can rewire your rewire. brain yeah. if you think other thoughts and you stop thinking those other thoughts and those other pathways will literally like grow in with brain, right. you know, cells and matter, and you can create these new pathways. It's hard. It takes some time. Just like when you start working out, you're sore. Um, but later it feels better. And in a few weeks, you know, you keep working out, you're not as sore anymore. You're getting stronger and you're building muscle mass and 
your, the brain is a muscle. Absolutely. And in the same way, like, I think we got to be intentional, even about the, the, the thoughts we're thinking, the people we're around, the environments. And if you're always around negativity, man, it's, it's, it's going to cause you to be more negative. Yeah. That's so good because, you know, there's two things I want to make sure people don't miss. One, God has created us in his image and likeness and given us the ways to succeed. You know what I mean? Based on what he's planning for you to do, your purpose and calling. But two, one of the things you just said is, man, that that ability to rewire. If rewiring sounds too deep for you, change your habits. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Um, And you can do it. But Pastor Tommy says something that's so important. You have to be intentional. Mm. It's not going to happen by happenstance. You have to be intentional and really want to want to do that, bro. That's that's so good. Let me ask you this: for, for for the you know, given the experience you've had in this space, always believe pastors carry an extra burden. Talk to me about self care. After you do all of that, yeah. right? Pa- pastoring the kids, helping them, then the parents probably want some insight. Hey, help me help my child that you talk to, right? Give me some best yeah. practices, so on and so forth. And then you have other leaders you're responsible for, and you have that then what do you do for yourself, man, to care for you? Yeah. Well, I'll give you some practical things before I even jump into the spiritual stuff, but it's all yeah. spiritual. It all connects. It all ties together. Uh, man, I'll just say simply, you got to get your rest. Mm. Like as a leader, we yes. run hard, you mm-hmm. know, and you got to get your rest. And I know some leaders that they just don't get enough rest and you're wearing yourself out. Um, I mean, we're like, we're like one of these, bro. We, we got a battery <laughs> inside of us yes. and we got to plug that battery in Yes. and we got to recharge, you know? So man, you need to get seven to eight hours of sleep. And some leaders are trying to like be hardcore and get five or six every night. And it's just, and yeah, your body can eventually adapt to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know some leaders that just run like that, but like God made us our bodies to also rest and recharge it. That's going to age you a lot quicker. Yeah, People are like, yeah. man, how you look so young? Well, I get like eight hours of sleep every night. Most mm-hmm. of the time, right. you know, um, I take care of myself. I drink, I drink a lot of water. I don't drink soda. Yeah. I, don't, I don't drink sugary drinks. I, I'm, yeah. I mean, I, I go, I go work out. I eat clean. Mm-hmm. I pay attention to all those kind of things. I take vitamins. I go to a doctor, a holistic doctor, a couple times a year and get blood work and That's check good. my levels. And I'm working on things that, to make sure I'm, I'm staying where I need to, man, because I want to be at optimal health. Yes. Because if you're not at optimal health, you can't move and function in the same way. You've got brain fog, you're tired, yep. you get lazy. And, and when you get tired, you know what you do? You start scrolling on this. Start scrolling. And you're start not scrolling. being productive. You're, you're wasting time. You're getting sucked in. You're, Absolutely. You're getting, you're comparing yourself. You're getting depressed. This is why people get depressed right Bro, here a lot of times. Oh, listen. You're looking that at device... everybody's highlight reel and being like, my life sucks. Absolutely. You know? I, bro, I, I saw the most scary video to me the other day, man. It was a brother who had figured out how to, you know, you, you can have Siri do voice prompts, right? Yeah. And so what he did was figure out how, and, and was teaching people in this video how to make it uh, go to the next video and scroll for you. So that way he could lay under his covers, keep his hands and everything under the covers and just say, wow. Next. Next, next, and he would just watch videos for hours, right? And just be this, you know. So in other words, Yo, that's listen, crazy. You, know I, mean? you, I you, see that. you can snuggle up and get comfy and still control your socials. Like, oh my god, I don't. We 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 don't want this. We don't want this, man. Listen, I know I I gotta uh, get you out of here soon. So let me try to wrap up with a few, brother. W- one of the things you said um, to this point, man, and and I think this goes further from a dopamine's point of view. Having things is uninteresting. It's only getting things that matter. Yeah. I, I got to repeat that one, man. This is, yep. man, I want y'all listening to get this for real. Like underline, circle it, highlight it, whatever you do. From a dopamine's point of view, having things is uninteresting. It's only getting things that matter. Mm. That's a chase life, bro. Yep, it is, bro. And that's how so many people are living. And listen, if you're listening to this, you don't know what dopamine is. It's a hormone that your body creates. Um, when something uh, triggers that, that's exciting. Um, even, even seeing that you got a like or a comment, that can trigger a little bit of dopamine. That's why you keep going back to this. Um, they, they, have, they have done studies. They want to keep you on their platform as long as possible. Absolutely. And the likes and the comments and the hearts and the different things triggers a little bit of dopamine. But dopamine is never about 
how much you have. It's just about how much you can keep getting. And it's a never ending chase. They've done scientific studies on it. And it's never going to, you're never going to arrive. There's always going to, you're always going to need a, another hit. And a Absolutely. lot of times the next hit has got to be bigger. So that Absolutely. very first pair of sneakers that you buy, when you open up that box and you're like, oh man, you smell the new shoes. Like, oh man, this is amazing. Well, well now you're, you got a whole closet full of shoes and you can't even get that same feeling again. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Because you, you're always like, it's always the next thing. You know, we were talking totally. about, we went on a cruise, but you know, the first cruise is great, but now like, okay, you got, what's the next, what's oh, the man, next one? The new right. bigger boat with, with right. the big water slide and all this crazy stuff. <laughs> right. You know? And you want to plan it now. So you have something to look forward to. Right. I mean, yep. I'll tell you the short story, bro. So I was, I was, I was working at Chase, man, with several of us. And, and it, what's so funny is when I think about this is we were all senior vice presidents. Right. But this one Christmas came where uh, one of the guys wanted to get the new PlayStation or whatever it was. And you, you know how it is going that time. You just can't find mm-hmm. it. OK. Yeah. Somehow this becomes our mission every day. Around 10 o'clock, we stop in each other's offices. Hey, have you found some way to get it? Call the GameStop. Call us that and that. Yeah, bro. This was going on for like two weeks. We had, we just got to find it. We find a mm-hmm. store that has it. We all jump in the car together, leave the office, run down the highway. We get there, it's gone. We're like, oh, <sighs> next time we call the store and I say to the guy, listen, we are on our way. What's your name? He tells me name, Harold, whatever. Harold, I got an extra 10 for you, 20 for you, whatever. Hold it. My name's James. We come in. My boy's got to get it. Past time, I'll tell you this. We go to the store, we get it. We get in the car and then we're almost like, what are we going to do now? yeah <laughs> seriously we were the driving back to the goal. office we got it. right we were driving back to the office we should be like happy andrew's kid is getting it but we were what are, what are we going to do <laughs> yeah right classic what's example bro conquest? classic example <laughs> exactly what's the next conquest i, I want to end on this one in the soul restoration chapter because i'm skipping a couple things because you do a great job of diving into the realities of sin contextually talking about Satan as the music director. And I love how you say, listen, he's the executive producer, right? Yep. <laughs> and so this was his job and he's good at it. And so you shouldn't be shocked that a lot of things that we hear are filled with evil and things that are counter to the God we want to serve. Yeah. But yeah. then you go into the, to the gospel shoes section and talk about what those shoes look like on us. And then you talk about soul restoration. And I want to end with this last quote from you. One, again, once you are all in, your creator will customize your spiritual shoes and bless your souls with unique branding. And you know, the note I wrote next to that was, man, to to constantly be thankful and accepting of that uniqueness that God has given me mm. without comparison. Yeah. Right? And that's the key word, without comparison, but also to celebrate my brothers and sisters' unique branding and gifts and talents, even if I don't understand it sometimes. Yeah. Right? But to celebrate it, knowing that God gave it to them, man. Yeah, man. And and man, I celebrate you, bro. You are a unique, one of a kind person that the, the gifts and talents and life experience, oh, thank you, brother. education, all the stuff that God's put in you. And you were able to create this thing that we are having this interview on right now, man, to get out yeah. to so many people, man. And yes, so sir. that's that's beautiful, bro. Yeah. So, man, I just want to thank you for the book. Thank you for all the service. Thank you for the Several books. Is, is this the third or fourth? I can't recall. Yeah, believe it or not, bro, this is book seven. This is book seven. It's See? book seven. Yeah. <sighs> last year was yeah. Frames, right? Yeah, last year was Frames. And, you know, na- now I'm kind of in a groove as a writer. You know, yeah. I wrote my first book in 2007, Unorthodox. It came out mm-hmm. through Zondervan. Then I waited until like 2015 to do it, my second book. And then I just kind of like, transition from doing music as much to, yeah. to writing and got in a groove and at first man writing was hard i'm like man i'd rather do an album all day mm, mm. you know but now I, i've really kind of found my writing voice and um and yeah i, I enjoy it man and you know it's, it's it's the next season of my life you know that's good bro so that's good yeah bro well, and, well listen yeah, I'm, go ahead. I'm so passionate about gotta be the shoes that um if you didn't know i'm giving it away for free so you guys can get it at freeshoesbook.com. Mm. And uh, you not only get Gotta Be the Shoes, but we throw in the Frames book as well. So you get both books for free and both books have a master class that goes with it. So there's a video session with each chapter. Mm. And um, yeah, I, I'm the publisher of it. So I could choose to give it away for free. Um, the only dope. thing you got to pay for is the shipping. That's it. And then if you want to upgrade and get like the cool custom box and, 
you know, there, there's some other things you could get. Like you could go ahead and do that. Like, you know, Trig recommends the box. Get the it box. I'm trying to tell you, get the art. box. It's a piece of art, man. Get the box. But, yeah, but freeshoesbook.com has got the details. And yeah, man, we've been getting it out to hundreds and hundreds of people the last yeah. few weeks. It's been awesome. Get the hey, hey, people, get the box. They even ask you for the shoe size so they can put that on there custom for you, okay? And so I'm telling you right now, I'm holding up my copy, which he autographed for me. By the way, you can you can, you can, um, you can can uh, add a couple of dollars and have Pastor T autograph it for you. Get that. And just the man, I'm a, I'm I'm sorry to brag on you, bro. Just the layout and quality of this book, man. This is a. By, by the this way, is that, one of those that, that page you just showed. Did you see yeah. what that had on it? Yeah, I did. Yes, brother E, yeah. man, absolutely dedication right there. That's dedication. my guy, brother E. Yeah, but all through the book, man, just showing some of the the treasures that many of you sneakerheads have enjoyed over the years, and again, connecting it to the most important thing in your life, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Pastor T, love you, brother. Thank you for being here. Oh, you too, man. And uh, thank you, brother. See you soon. Thanks for having me. Peace.